Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel, and today we are speaking with Dan Blondell, the CEO and founder of Nano One Materials. Ticker symbol is NANO on the TSX. How are you today, Dan? Great, Chris. Thanks for uh, bringing me on the show. Uh, so, Dan, uh, you, Nano One focuses on uh, a process for the production of cathode materials used in lithium ion batteries. And, uh, and p- as people might know, cathode is a critical uh, component uh, of these uh, lithium ion batteries and a major expense in electric vehicles. Uh, maybe you can just touch on exactly what uh, Nano One does. Yeah, so, so Nano One is an industrial technology company, and we're developing a process to make these cathode materials. The technology is a platform that allows us to make a whole range of different types of cathode materials. So we have um, we have a, a sort of a, a strategic efforts in lithium iron phosphate, in uh, which are sort of iron rich materials. Um, uh, manganese rich materials for sort of fast charging applications and nickel rich materials for energy dense applications. Uh, the, uh, the underlying technology is what we call the one pot process and it, it makes a coated single crystal powders for more durability in the, in the battery. And, and it also enables us to do what we call, um, what enables us to make cathode materials directly from metal powders, a technology that we call M2CAM or metals to, metal to cathode active material. And that allows us to, to bypass the intermediate um, uh, uh, conversion of metals to sulfates. So we eliminate the use of sulfates, all the associated waste, all the associated shipping costs, environmental footprint and cost um, uh, that comes with that. So this is pretty significant from, uh, as you mentioned, from both a waste and a cost uh, side of the equation. Uh, how are you finding it received in the marketplace? Uh, there's a tremendous amount of interest, uh, particularly in the last, uh, you know, um, uh, in the last six months to a year, uh, as the auto codes and the and the supply chain wakes up to how they have to green the supply chain and how how we have to you know further drive down costs. So it's about integrating the supply chain and making it um, making it better. Uh, at the end of the day. And so it's resonating very well. And I guess if we're looking at, you know, the last couple of news releases, this is coming to fruition with a couple of agreements you've put in place, one with a mining company and one with an automotive company. Maybe you can just quickly walk through, through those items. Yeah, we, we've, uh, we have been developing more and more relationships way upstream um, uh, with, uh, with mining companies, both junior and fully integrated miners. And, and I think that because obviously there's an interest there in, um, uh, in developing a, uh, a supply chain that brings greater value to their product um, and uh, helps eliminate some of the, the waste in the, in, the, in the stream. The automotive companies um, as well, of course, are very interested in that, um, but they're also interested in, in integrating, integrating everything kind of downstream of mining uh, to make a, uh, to leverage the chemistry, the, the batteries that can be made from that chemistry and, and how it fits between the wheels in their vehicle. And uh, we announced um, uh, a deal recently with uh, Euro Manganese uh, on the sort of junior mining thing uh, related to manganese. And at the same time, we announced a, uh, um, an MOU with a large um, global automotive manufacturer to develop a manganese rich uh, lithium ion battery uh, for fast charging type applications. So, and so you're basically looking at that from both sides. You're looking at from the helping the miners get their product into a battery and, and helping the automotive companies get, uh, you know, lock down their supply chain. Yeah, essentially, we, we, we're working at the bookends of the supply chain um, to create demand for our technology. And, uh, and, and we're, we're finding we're getting a lot of traction and a lot of advancement with, with the miners and with the auto coast. Um, obviously, we have to fulfill that in the midstream between the two and, and working with the chemical companies and looking at opportunities to put demonstration facilities in place in various jurisdictions around the world is, uh, and is an extremely sort of part, important part of our strategy as well. For instance, we announced a joint development agreement with, with Johnson Matthey um, earlier this year um, uh, to develop a nickel rich uh, material that they call ELNO. Uh, it's, uh, it's intended for the, uh, the high end of, of batteries uh, for long range luxury electric vehicle type applications. And how are you protecting your investment? Well, I think the the, um, the the key thing here is is uh, is around IP and, and technology development. It, it, this is about um, building out a, a robust, resilient technology 
uh, portfolio that can be used to uh, license uh, into the uh, basically into the space as as a as a way for us to partner with the auto codes, the mining companies, and the midstream chemical producers um, to help build out that supply chain, green it up, clean it up, and and just make it uh, make it better for the future. And did I see you got some new patents as well this summer? Uh, yes, I think uh, we're patent number 20 right now uh, that has been issued to us. And those those fall into jurisdictions, um, obviously Canada and the US. And then in Asia, there's Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China. Uh, and and we have about another 40 patents in the pipeline um, and, a, and, a, and a roughly about uh, 20, 26, 27 different patent families that are currently being prosecuted and in and, and various states of uh, pending. So how are you going to turn this into profits? So this um, uh, this is all obviously it's all about execution. It's all about getting to a point where uh, we are licensing our technology either into a joint venture or into a sort of a pure kind of royalty play. And we're well along the way with uh, a whole number of our partners. And, and what sort of uh, news do you think uh, investors should see over the next say, six, six months with the company? Well, I, th- I think investors can expect to see more news about partnerships and 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 obviously more news about what our strategic efforts are going to be um, towards, um, 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 I, I guess, partnering on these facilities, on these demonstration facilities. I think particularly um, they should look to us to be doing things very actively in North America, ramping up our, our program on lithium iron phosphate, on the high nickel materials, and, uh, and on the manganese rich materials as well. Well, that's great. I I, thanks for your time today. I I think this, uh, you know, as most people are aware, the electric vehicle space is is booming. Uh, A lot of commitments from the the environmental uh, conference that they're looking to, uh, you know, move towards uh, cars, towards EV cars, towards the say the mid nineteen sorry two thousand and thirty five time frame. So I think over the next uh, few years, you will get a lot more interest in uh, you know the material side to ensure that you can actually produce these batteries. Yeah, um, we certainly, certainly find ourselves in the sweet spot and are, are very excited about the, uh, the, the, the coming months and the coming decade as well. I mean, it's, uh, it is quite tremendous, the amount of growth and opportunity that uh, lies in front of us. Well, that's great. And we look forward to uh, watching your pro- progress and speaking with you again soon about it. Thanks. Right. Uh, it was Dan Blundell, who is the founder and CEO of Nano One Materials. Thanks, Chris.